everyone, a conservative Polish politician has formally invited what he calls the wrongfully accused students from Covington Catholic School to speak before Parliament. That's what we're we'll talking about on today's video. But first, a huge shout out to all of our first time viewers. A very, very warm welcome to all of you. I post two videos a day analyzing current events and some really awesome conservative trends. So if you would please smack that bell and subscribe button, it'd be an absolute privilege to have you as a regular part of this channel. And as well, for everyone, we have brand new Yellow Vest Uprising shirts and mugs at our storefront at the link below. So if you want to help support this channel and show your solidarity with the Yellow Vest protesters, make sure to get your new mug and t-shirt. I've ordered mine. Hope you order yours. All right, so I'm sure you're all familiar now with the whole insane left-wing fiasco that took place uh, surrounding a bunch of students from Covington Catholic School at the March for Life in Washington, D.C. just this past Friday. A video surfaced that reportedly, that's the key, it was reported by all two eager left-wing media outlets that these students, many of whom were wearing red MAGA hats, right? Make America Great Again hats. They had surrounded an elderly Native American man, minding his own business, beating his ceremonial drum, and they began mocking and ridiculing and harassing the poor old man in racially insensitive ways. And so... The headlines from CNN and MSNBC and the AP and on and on reported that Trump-inspired students engage in a sickening display of racism caught on video. And that then led, as anyone could have us, uh, any one of us could have predicted, that led to the virtue signalers on the left exploding. The students were being accused of white patriarchy. One contributor to the New York Times said that they were living, they were a living embodiment of the toxic masculinity that we recently saw so pathetically on display with the newest Gillette razor ad, by the way, with the boys fetid, smirking, harassing that poor elderly man, and that anyone who was aggrieved by that Gillette ad could go F themselves. This is the New York Times. Go F yourself, New York Times. The students and their families have been doxxed. They've been harassed by leftists on social media relentlessly. And there are reports they've even received uh, numerous death threats, which is a bit scary when your address and all your private information has just been intentionally made public for all to see on the Internet. Uh, Twitter demonstrated their uh, selective virtue enforcement by allowing a number of verified accounts to call for the death of the students. One in particular recommended that the uh, school, the Covington Catholic School, be burned down with the students locked inside. Isn't it lovely to know that we have such tolerant liberal elites in our midst who, by the way, continue to enjoy tweeting without any sanctions from Twitter. But then, as I'm sure you all know, the actual unedited video surfaced and we found that it was, in fact, the Native American man who turns, turns out to be a pretty far left-wing activist. It's he who approached the students. The students were the ones minding their own business. This elderly man got in their face beating his drum, and they seemed to think, uh, and this has since been confirmed by their own written statements on this, they seemed to think that he was part of the March for Life, and that he was getting, he was trying to get in between the students and a group of black nationalist cult members who were hurling bigoted and homophobic insults at them. And so as a way of drowning out the slander coming at them from these black nationalist cult members, they began amplifying the drum beating with Native American-like singing and dancing because they all thought it was, you know, that's what the fellow with the drum wanted them to do. So needless to say, now all of the so-called mainstream media and these Hollywood virtue signalers are eating crow. But the saddest thing for me, the most devastating part in this whole horrific situation is the failure of the school teachers and administrators and indeed most of all the Catholic leaders to stand up for these boys. You know, as a teacher, one of the whole notions of actually teaching virtue to your kids is that when your kids are in trouble, they need to see adults standing in between them and the perpetrators who threaten them. They needed to see school officials stand in between them and these insane, rabid, virtue-signaling liberals 
leveling accusation after accusation against them, particularly from the corporatist globalist media and these Hollywood elite entertainers. These Catholic students needed to see the freaking archdiocese stand up for members of their flock, not excoria, not throw them under the bus, not to save their own just, oh, we promise we're not, we're not racist like those MAGA hat kids, I promise. I get to see these pathetic, gutless, so-called school administrators and teachers and priests and bishops even remotely, even remotely stand up on behalf of these students who've been eviscerated for no reason whatsoever by the secular, amoral, left-wing, corporatist, globalist world that lurks in hiding, actively seeking to destroy anyone, anyone they deem to have affinity for the nationalist, populist, and traditionalist right. Well, now, finally, I'm very, very happy to announce that the whole outrageous notion of the situation is getting people to stand up even from across the pond in the international realm. It's now being reported that a conservative lawmaker from Poland has invited what he calls the wrongfully accused students at Covenant Catholic School to come and speak before the Polish parliament. Just the other day, Dominik Tarzinski, who's the newly elected vice president of the European Conservatives in the Council of Europe, he tweeted out his invitation to the Covenant Catholic students. And he wrote that after watching the video for himself, unlike the media, he was standing up for these wrongfully accused young men and indeed all of the students at Covington. And as such, they were all invited to come and speak before Parliament to speak what they believe in and uh, get Polish support. Now, obviously, this international invitation, indeed excoriation of our American elites, again, including the archdiocese and school officials who have yet to release a statement in defense and support of these boys, but obviously the Polish member of Parliament's invitation has garnered some significant attention when being uh, interviewed about this. Tarzinski almost sounded like John Paul II telling the Catholic students that it was very important at this moment in time to be brave in the face of false and slanderous reports that are being hurled at them from all sectors of society. So we need you, the young men, just like you, to be brave. Be brave for yourselves, for your country, and indeed for the world. And that's what I call leadership, right? God bless Dominic Tarzinski. He went on to say that this really is all about basic honesty, you know? The basic honesty, just reporting all the basic facts in a situation. When you consider the whole situation, there's absolutely not even remotely any rational excuse to harass and threaten, intimidate, and torment these students. I don't know if you know, but there are reports out there that left-wing activists are trying to contact the colleges and universities that these students have applied to in order to pressure them to reject the students' applications. I mean, if that is true, this is how evil, this is how destructive the left has become. And President Trump himself has weighed in on all of this. He tweeted out just the other day, actually he's done a couple of tweets on it, that the Covington Catholic students were being treated unfairly with early judgments turning out to be false, good old fake news. They've been smeared by the media. He cited Tucker Carlson of Fox News' coverage that the larger video footage does in fact show that the corporatist globalist media was flat out wrong in their coverage of the whole incident. Now this is leadership. Remember folks, piling on is not leadership. Piling on is mob mentality. When these pundits and politicians and entertainers made these visceral comments without obviously watching the whole video, even so-called conservative ones like Bill Crystal, it demonstrates that they are not leaders, they are followers. They're sheep who wait for any opportunity to publicly show their politically correct bona fides. So I'm so very glad to see that there are real leaders out there. Unlike their administrators, their school administrators, the archdiocese, who are hiding, cowering under their desks. No, I'm glad that the students get to see real leadership coming from the likes of Dominic Tarzinski, President Trump, and others who are willing to model before these students what real leadership actually looks like, what real bravery looks like. I most certainly hope these students imitate such leadership and actively stand against the shameless slander leveled at them by the corpus globalist media and their knee-jerk advocates in the social media world. It is indeed time for them, and indeed for all of us, to be brave and to be bold. 
As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Click on either our Patreon, subscribe, star, PayPal links below. Become a supporter of this channel and help us to continue to analyze current events in light of awesome conservative trends so that you can personally and professionally flourish. God bless. When